Hello there, welcome back everybody, and to all you new subscribers, welcome for the very first time. Thank you for following me on this channel, it really means a lot to me. Uh, no cigar or whiskey tonight, by the way, just uh, you and me and the not-so-cool November evening. Tonight I wanted to talk to you about school, and uh, college specifically, because in three months it will have been three years since I graduated with my bachelor's degree from Arizona State University. A lot of mixed feelings coming up on that anniversary. First of all, I guess I had, I really did have a, a, a pretty incredible time in college. Very formative time for everyone. Maybe not as formative as high school, if you ask me. I think that's when you really start to become uh, the man you're going to be or the woman you're going to be for the rest of your life uh, is after you graduate high school. But big things can happen in, in college as well. I know that I met a lot of really good friends, literally from all over the United States, some from all over the world in college who I still keep in touch with today even though we moved on and we may be doing different things and we may have different professional trajectories I, uh, I keep in touch with a lot of people who, who, who mean a lot to me and um, those connections are, are worth something for sure. My experience personally I went, took two years of community college at Scottsdale Community College because it was the cheaper option. I wasn't particularly good in high school so I didn't have any uh, special scholarships or anything like that and my parents really couldn't, they did help me out a little bit, but they couldn't help me out significantly enough to where it would have warranted going to ASU for all four years. So I was going to a community college, working at the same time. At one point I was taking 19 credits and working evenings uh, as a busboy. And it was, you know, it was it was difficult. I mean, like, if, if you're like me, if you're sort of lower income bracket background, uh, you know that it's, it's, it's not easy. You've got to work, and that work is definitely, almost definitely, going to compromise your grades sometime, and there's just no other option. If you want to go to school, you've got to do it. I just sort of sucked it up and did it. I'm very glad I did uh, Scottsdale Community College for those first two years. It was, um, it was <laughs> cheaper. <laughs> That's really the only reason why. Um, but uh, it was worth it when I got to ASU, and I did that for two years as well. My initial plan was to not take on any debt at all. I remember working as a busboy, I was like, I'm not going to take on any debt. I see how much stress it causes people. It would cause me a lot of stress, and I just don't want to do it. So I'll, I'll put it off. I'll put off college if I can't afford it right now, and I'll, you know, I'll save up enough money for it, and then I'll do it when I have enough money to just sort of cash out, pay for it right there, and that'll be that. And I can wash my hands of it when I, when I put on that cap and gown and graduate, and I'll be on my merry way. That did not end up happening. I ended up taking out uh, taking out some loans toward the end of my time at ASU because I just wanted to finish the degree. I didn't want to worry about my credits expiring or uh, you know getting out of it and not being able to get back in, which does happen to a lot of people. A lot of people say, "Hey, I'm going to finish later," and and they, I'm just I'm just taking a break to work a little bit, and that break to work a little bit turns into like a year and two years, and then you just never want to go back. So I just wanted to put like an end to it. I just wanted to to like wrap it up in a neat little package and and just make it mine and just be done with it. Graduated from ASU in uh, December of 2014 with a bachelor's degree in history. A little bit of debt, manageable amount. You know, more than I would have liked, but it, I, I was pretty satisfied with it. So I wanted to talk to you about my own personal experience, which I would guess I already kind of have talked a, a little bit about it. And then I also wanted to uh, make a few points and give a little evidence-based advice um, to those of you in college and those of you uh, looking to go to college or maybe considering it. I, there's so much advice out there of people based purely on their, um, on their, on their personal experiences that, that will really have no impact on, on your experience or you can at least not expect to have any impact on your experience. I don't want, it to, I don't want to waste your time. I want to give you, I want to report to you what I've learned from the best of the best who have studied these things uh, at a professional level. So. First off, uh, my experience in college. You know, I had to work through college. There was one year where I didn't work. That was a lot of fun because I had more time for clubs and you know, I was the president of a, of a, a political activist group. I, I was making a lot of connections. I was making a lot of friends. I was being more creative. Uh, it freed up a lot of time, which was really good for, for someone like me, like a, you know, someone who, who enjoys being creative and finds fulfillment in that. Um, but, for, you know, but for some people, uh, they prefer to work just to have a little extra cash on hand. I can appreciate that as well. Um, but I did make a lot of friends in college. Like I said, I, I was a president of a uh, of, an, of a club um, that I really enjoyed. I, I'm still great friends with a lot of people from there. I had some really incredible professors. 
uh, probably my favorite class that I've ever taken in college was an anthropology class that I took at ASU. And I didn't expect it to be as interesting and as fun as it was, but it was just an intro level anthropology class. And I learned so much about, uh, about deep history, about archaeology, about the human form, and about adaptation. It was just, it, I, I was really surprised with how interested I was in it. A sort of stupid personal advice thing, maybe take a class uh, just for fun, if you can afford it, <laughs> because it can be it can be interesting. You know, you can you can learn things that, about yourself that you never knew before, about your interests that you never knew before, and open up new pathways. So the book that I wanted to talk to you about is uh, a book that's not out yet. It's available for pre-order on Amazon, and it's called The Case Against Education by Brian Kaplan. This book has been uh, in the works for a while, and I'm uh, I follow Brian Kaplan. I follow his work. He's an economist, professional economist. I follow him on Facebook and on Twitter, and I read his blog. I think he's one of the smartest guys out there. You should definitely read his stuff. Um, it's very enlightening and helpful. And th this book, the, the Case Against Education, has been in the works, like I said, for a couple years now. So I've been sort of watching the formation of this book. I've been sort of following everything he has to say about it, about the structuring and about the research he's doing. And uh, even though it's not out yet, I am um, friends on Facebook with one of his professional colleagues. And so this uh, professional colleague has gotten early access to it and read it and provided a little summary of some of the points in the book which I think might be of interest to some of you. So here we go. So the thesis of the book is that the economic value of education is mainly signaling. So to be more specific about that, the actual economic value of your degree is not in the skills that you learn in your degree. The fact that you have a degree signals certain information to potential employers. It signals that you uh, have certain desirable traits such as intelligence, perseverance, the ability to follow instructions, and uh, basically a, a long time horizon. So you can complete uh, a long-term project that you set out to do at, you know, at X time, and then Y time, four years down the road, you complete it. So that shows follow-through. There are a couple degrees that he makes exception of, like business degrees and mechanical engineering degrees and things like that, that are immediately practical, that literally give you the skills that you need for work, like as if you were in a trade school. But most education, uh, certainly in the humanities, fits the signaling model, in my opinion, quite well. So Brian Kaplan in this book has reviewed um, a bunch of scholarly articles and research about this topic and he concluded a few different things based on it. Number one, education is one of the few products where if the buyer doesn't get the product, they're happy. It seems kind of counterintuitive when you put it that way, but think about this. You gotta go to class. You get up, you're tired, you know, you maybe you half-assed the homework last night or maybe you didn't even do it. And then you find out via email, class is canceled. Oh my God, class is canceled. Well, you don't have to go. That's awesome. Everyone likes that. I like that. You like that. We like it when class is canceled. Well, that's us not getting the product that we paid for. So this actually, um, the fact that the people are happy when class is canceled is evidence for the fact that um, students are not looking for education per se when they're going to school. They're looking for the certificate. Again, something we already knew, but it's still very interesting to put it in those terms. Number two, students almost never remember what they learned in class especially six months out of that class, they had forgotten most of what was taught to them. What this tells us is that the economic value of schooling is probably not due to the valuable information that they learn in class, i.e. they're not paying for the knowledge. Number three, a favorable claim of uh, education enthusiasts and uh, education salesmen, if you will, a popular thing that they like to say is that we don't teach kids what to think, we teach them how to think. That's the go-to defense. You've heard it, I've heard it. We've all heard it. The problem is, psychologists have studied this, um, and there's no evidence for it. It is simply a wishful assertion that they are giving you something magical, something useful, and something, you know, that, e that all of society could sign on to. You know, everyone would love to be taught how to think properly, to be taught how to critically think. But they can't do that, there's no evidence, case closed. Point number four. Statistically, all of the value of your education appears right at the end of your education. If you complete 3.5 years of a degree, you are not going to get any economic value out of it. Go ahead, sit down with an employer, get a job interview, sit down with a prospective employer, and tell him uh, when he asks you about your educational background, say you completed high school and 3.5 years of a degree. They'll just think, oh, well, you completed high school. And that's true, you've just completed high school. 
So all of that education up to that point, that's most of your degree. That's the vast majority of your degree is worthless. You don't have the degree. So I'll put a link in the description of this video to that summary and a link to the book. Uh, that was uh, the philosopher Michael Humer um, on Facebook summarizing this book. So thank you, Michael, for, for doing that, for reading the book and uh, letting us know some of the points that, that uh, Professor Kaplan makes. Um, it's sort of doom and gloom, but it's also probably true. These guys are, are just top tier. They're, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's easy and it's wishful thinking to, to listen to an educator bloviate about how much they do for the students and how you know education is, is, is like this magical thing that's special from all other goods and it's more important than, uh, than, than investing in anything else. But in reality, um, if you're like me, again, if you're like me, if you're in the lower income bracket, you cannot afford to, to fall into this unempirical, frankly irrational thinking and you've got to be reasonable about it. It is an, it is an expensive investment. Know what you're getting into. Look at the average salary of the people who graduate with the degree that you're going for and expect yourself to make around that much money. I mean, don't get too, you know, pie in the sky about, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get an archeology span degree and I'm gonna be like Indiana Jones or I'm gonna be like, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a photography degree and I'm gonna work for National Geographic. It's probably not gonna happen, I'm sorry. I wish the best for you, I wish it would happen. I wish that I were a world famous historian tutoring medieval English history at Yale University, but I'm not, okay? Just the way it worked out. <laughs> anyway, I hope I didn't depress you guys too bad tonight. Um, just trying to be real with you, you know, some people gotta be real with you, and I'm not, I've got no skin in the game. I did my degree, I'm done, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working full time now, very busy. I'm not in the, I'm not part of the educational establishment. I'm um, just trying to relay to you what the best information out there that I could find, and I hope that it helps you in some way. I hope that if it deters you, that you make a, a good investment with that money and time, you know, maybe a better investment, hopefully, in business or in whatever else it is that you want to do. Maybe trade school. Trade school is a great thing, too. Um, and if you do want to go the, the liberal arts route, if you're really, really passionate about what you want to do, um, make it your job as soon as possible. Make that change from a passion, from something that's like a hobby, or oh, I like to like it. Like in my case, oh, I like to read about history. I think history be, history is fun. Make it, make it work, okay? And I, it doesn't have to be boring to be work. Just make it. Be serious about it. Learn a foreign language, one foreign language um, that is that is applicable to the the field of history that you want to specialize in. Get really good at it. Learn to translate, okay? read all the great historians in that field, um, you know, do your thing. Uh, best of luck to you. Thank you for joining me again. I'll see you guys next time.